The game Feed Me Billy, developed by none other than Puppet Combo, is a 2018 horror game in which the player takes control of the eponymous killer, Billy, who is tasked with sating a massive flesh-eating hole that is materialized in his closet. The game consists of three different scenarios that all start off with Billy waking up in his bed, getting a phone call, then putting on his clown mask and arming himself with a revolver before getting in his car and driving off to look for victims. Scenario 1 takes place late at night by a gas station where a woman is using a payphone. Billy parks in the nearby woods before killing her and then afterward takes her corpse into his car. In the second scenario, Billy yet again parks in the woods and then wanders upon a campsite with three people enjoying themselves and having fun. He promptly kills them and carries them off to his car, where he then feeds them to the hole in his closet. In the third and final scenario, Billy happens upon a couple of small houses by the side of his road. He kills the inhabitants and yet again takes their corpses into his car. After feeding the corpses into the flesh-eating hole, a goat, seemingly made out of flesh, and presumably representative of manifestations of Satan, arises from the hole, and text exclaiming, all done, appears. The game then abruptly ends, but there's a certain commonality throughout the game. A constant, if you will. Every night Billy wakes up and gets ready to go out and kill the victims the hole needs, the hole is gone, and all he's left with is his closet full of jumpsuits, probably one for each day of the week. Despite the fact that when Billy comes back with fresh meat, ready to feed the hole, the wall where Billy's closet used to be now has a room fleshed out, literally fleshed out, and what looks like a more hole-ridden sarlacc pit is right in the middle of his room sporting the worst wallpaper ever conceived. After Billy gets done feeding the hole with a diet concerningly high in cholesterol, he goes to sleep and wakes up the next day only to have the creature gone again. What could be going on here? Is there some sort of secret entrance to the hole we don't know about? Is a part of the creature able to disguise itself as a closet? What inconceivably influenced this innately incomprehensible creature to manifest whenever it wanted and to be fed and to dip from existence only when Billy was preparing to kill people? To answer this question, we need to posit three hypotheses as to what could be going on with Billy, specifically to appropriate explicate reasons as to why what Billy perceives to be existing could, well, exist. The first theory is that Billy suffers from an underlying medical condition that causes him to hallucinate and render images of entities that aren't really there. Whatever medical obstruction he's tasked with overcoming, at least he has a symptom that causes him to hallucinate this organism embedded in the floor of his room, where his closet used to be. It at least has a symptom that causes him to hallucinate this organism embedded in the floor of a room where his closet used to be. The most likely theory, since it seems to align most with what real-life scientific accord would tell you, in pertinence to how afflictions affect visual stimuli. The second theory, and second most plausible in explaining what could be wrong with Billy, is that he's under the influence of a psychoactive substance that causes him to hallucinate the beast. He's taking a drug at some point during the day, prone to causing vivid hallucinations in common and or high doses. The third, and in our opinions, least likely theory, is that the events of the game never really took place in the tangible reality of the game, and it was all a dream. The period where Billy comes back into his house and dumps the bodies into the hole isn't actually based in reality, but only in his phantasmagoria, and the dream ends when he wakes up. According to Tiepel, Kaplan, and Stern in Visual Hallucinations, Differential Diagnosis and Treatment, they state, quote, Visual hallucinations can be the result of three processes, given the interplay among disturbances of brain anatomy, brain chemistry, prior experiences, and psychodynamic meaning. To date, no single neuron mechanism has explained all types of visual hallucinations. However, the similarity of visual hallucinations that are associated with seemingly diverse conditions suggests a final common pathway. Manfred and Adderman summarized three pathophysiologic mechanisms thought to account for complex visual hallucinations. The first mechanism involves irritation, e.g. seizure activity, of cortical centers responsible for visual processing. Irritation of the primary visual cortex, Rodman's Area 17, causes simple elementary visual hallucinations, while irritation of the visual association cortices, Rodman's Areas 18 and 19, causes more complex visual hallucinations. These data are supported by both EEG recordings and 
direct stimulation experiments, unquote. Being the most likely theory, and for the sake of explication, we should bring up as to why this might be what's causing Billy's situation. In taking a look at disorders that cause hallucinations, according to a group of various scientists, whose names we can't say all at once, but we'll link in the description since this script is gonna be agony to record, they state, quote, Schizophrenia is a mental disorder characterized by continuous or relapsing episodes of psychosis. Major symptoms include hallucinations, typically hearing voices, delusions, and disorganized thinking. Other symptoms include social withdrawal, decreased emotional expression, and apathy. Symptoms typically come on gradually, begin in young adulthood, and in many cases never resolve." Unquote. For further clarification, according to another group of scientists, quote, "...psychosis is an abnormal condition of the mind that results in difficulties determining what is real and what is not real. Symptoms may include delusions and hallucinations. Other symptoms may include incoherent speech and behavior that is inappropriate for the situation. There may also be sleep problems, social withdrawal, lack of motivation, and difficulties carrying out daily activities. Psychosis can have serious adverse outcomes." Unquote. In relation to how schizophrenic hallucinations work, according to Medline, quote, visual hallucinations involve seeing objects, people, lights, or patterns that are not actually present. Visualizing dead loved ones, friends, or other people they knew can be particularly distressing. Perception may be altered as well, resulting in difficulty judging distance. Unquote. It's possible that there could be a case of schizophrenia involving an entity that wasn't really there, but this wouldn't explain how it was so material, and was specifically located in one location at a certain time of day, in a specific location every time. In the same abstract of an underlying condition causing Billy's hallucinations, according to the NINDS, quote, Kreutzfeld jacob disease, also known as subacute spongiform or neurocognitive disorder due to prion disease, is a fatal degenerative brain disorder. Early symptoms include memory problems, behavioral changes, poor coordination, and visual disturbances." Unquote. Likewise, in a 49-year-old man with forgetfulness and gait impairment, the report states, the first, quote, the first symptom of CJD is usually rapidly progressive dementia, leading to memory loss, personality changes, and hallucinations. Unquote. Yet another condition prone to causing vivid hallucinations, especially in its later stages of later stages. To even get somewhat close to Billy's predicament, the question of what hallucinations caused by this disease needs to be answered. In an exemplary story, according to Of Illusions, Hallucinations, and Kreutzfeld Jacob Disease, Heidenhain's variant, it states, quote, the patient is a 75-year-old female with past medical history significant for coronary artery bypass surgery, hypertension, arthritis, non-insulin-dependent diabetes, and hypercholesterolemia. Personal and family history of psychiatric illness, substance abuse, dementia, or cognitive decline was denied. She was functioning well as a housewife until a few weeks prior to admission when she became more anxious, presumably over a home reorganization project. Two days prior to admission, she began to experience visual distortions which were described as changes in the furniture. The china closet was tilted, the table had shrunk, and the chair legs had been cut off." Unquote. Side note, to be better informed on the effects of this disease, we highly recommend checking out the link to the paper below below, as this case report and the one after it are really interesting stories. It seems that the most common types of hallucinations induced by CJD are minor visual distortions, i.e. alterations in already existing matter instead of production of new matter entirely, especially with the variant in question, which is what it's characterized by. Billy is most likely in a state of severe and detrimental CJD if his hallucinations caused by the condition are this interactable, because visions of this level of vibrance don't usually happen in earlier stages stages of the disease's progression. But even if Billy was in a stage of late CJD and or schizophrenia or some type of underlying condition that causes him to see the whole, it still doesn't explain as to why the same hallucination appears to be in the same spot at roughly the same time every night. This also isn't to say a 75-year-old Turkish woman situation and Billy's don't have inequivalencies, because there are a number of factors distinguishing the two cases, and the woman in the case report had a very rare variation of an already exceedingly rare brain disease disease. So rare, as a matter of fact, that we couldn't even find a Google Knowledge panel for variant besides an excerpt from a paper on it. Nevertheless, if the possibility of Billy visualizing the whole because of a medical condition is ruled out, there's still a very plausible way he could be altering the way the human body processes visual stimuli to produce the effect.
According to the National Institute of Drug Abuse, quote, hallucinogens are a diverse group of drugs that alter a person's awareness of their surroundings as well as their own thoughts and feelings. They're commonly split into two categories, classic hallucinogens, such as LSD, and dissociative drugs, such as PCP. Both types of hallucinogens can cause hallucinations or sensations and images that seem real, though they are not. Additionally, dissociative drugs can cause users to feel out of control or disconnected from their body and environment. Some hallucinogens are extracted from plants or mushrooms, and some are synthetic human-made. Historically, people have used hallucinogens for religious or healing rituals. More recently, people report using these drugs for social or recreational purposes, including to have fun, deal with stress, have spiritual experiences, or just to feel different." Unquote. We'd also introduce delirium drugs as a class of hallucinogen because their effects closely resemble what Billy sees, especially in higher doses. According to yet again, another group of papers who we couldn't all mention in such a short period of time, deliriums are a class of hallucinogen. The term was coined in the early 1980s to distinguish these drugs from psychedelics and dissociatives such as LSD and ketamine due to their primary effect of causing delirium, as opposed to the more lucid and less disturbed states produced by other types of hallucinogens. The term generally refers to anticholinergic drugs, which are substances that inhibit the function of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Common examples of deliriums include plants of genera Datura and Brugmansia, both containing scopolamine, as well as higher than recommended dosages of diphenyl hydramine, which is Benadryl. Despite their long history of use, deliriums are the least studied class of hallucinogens in terms of their behavioral and neurological effects." Unquote. Since Billy is seeing specifically a Lovecraftian creature that seems to have sprawled itself over every last inch of the room where his closet used to be, it's worthwhile to determine what specific class of hallucinogen he's under the influence of to give more conceivability to this hypothesis. In Rock Art or Rorschach, Is There More in Topics Than Meets the Eye, David Luke writes, quote, at lower doses, features of psychedelic experiences include sensory alterations such as the warping of surfaces, shape suggestibility, and color variations. Users often report intense colors that they have not previously experienced, and repetitive geometric shapes are common. Higher doses often cause intense and fundamental alterations of sensory perception such as synesthesia or the experience of additional spatial or temporal dimensions, unquote. Since psychedelic visuals usually involve visual distortions of already existing matter, specifically at common to high doses, the effects of most drugs acting on the 5-HT2A receptor typically don't correlate with what Billy is seeing. In an INDJSP paper on the topic of hallucinogens induced by dissociatives, Kamala Deka Hamanta Duda writes, quote, visual hallucinations generally take the form of detailed images with traumatic or frightening content. Tactile, gustatory, and olfactory hallucinations may also occur, leading to misdiagnoses of seizure disorder or other organic mental disorders. Unquote. This sets up better framework for the specific type of hallucinations Billy is seeing because it's inching towards the realm of frightening hallucinations, but in terms of horror, it's nothing compared to visions induced by acetylcholine inhibitor delirians. According to yet another compilation of multiple scientists whose names would be pretty superfluous to name out right now, quote, the hallucinations themselves are often described by users as disturbing, unpleasant, or dark in nature. Other commonly reported behaviors and experiences include holding conversations with with imagined persons or entities, smoking non-existent cigarettes, even with non-smokers, visual hallucinations of spiders or shadow figures, or being unable to recognize one's own reflection in a mirror. Delirians best fit the criteria of the hallucination of the whole, but even then, all of these powerful hallucinogens exert their own effects on the human body, which this idea doesn't take into account and still hasn't explained how the creature only appears at a certain time of day, in a specific spot with no other observable effects. If not induced by a condition or a psychological psychoactive substance, maybe it's not caused by either of them. The least well-substantiated conclusion of the three, dreams are defined by the Free Dictionary as, quote, A dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep, unquote. Additionally, and specifically pertaining to the content of dreams, in an article on how blind people dream, Melissa Dahl writes, quote, The visual nature of dreams is generally highly phantasmagoric, that is, different locations and objects continuously blended into each other. The visuals, including locations, 
people and objects are generally reflective of a person's memories and experiences, but conversation can take on highly exaggerated and bizarre forms. Some dreams may even tell elaborate stories wherein the dreamer enters an entirely new, complex world and awakes with ideas, thoughts, and feelings never experienced prior to the dream. People who are blind from birth do not have visual dreams. Their dream contents are related to other senses like hearing, touch, smell, and taste, which ever are present since birth." Unquote. These excerpts already partially refute the narrative that's been arrived at, since the way dreams are fed to the brain isn't exactly the continuous way we process visual stimuli in real life. Dreams are like a slideshow of GIFs, roughly cutting the one basic moving image one after another, but when conscious, we see continuously, as is of Billy and his whole he feeds the bodies of seemingly innocent, predominantly young people to, more specifically, what Billy's undergoing may be a certain type of dream. According to the DSM-4, quote, a nightmare is an unpleasant dream that can cause strong, negative, emotional responses from the mind, typically fear or horror, but also despair, anxiety, and great sadness. The dream may contain situations of danger, discomfort, psychological, or physical terror. Sufferers usually awaken in a state of distress and may be unable to return to sleep for a prolonged period of time." Unquote. If a thorough review of what Billy's undergoing is to be considered a dream, it more fits under the criteria of a nightmare as having to kill what are presumably young adults to feed to a whole and by extension summon what looks like a goat wouldn't be a pleasant experience by most people's standards. This yet again doesn't explain why the most surreal element of the experience only came at a certain time of the nightmare, since they're often roughly organized phantasmagoric imagery. There are three hypotheses and three possible explanations for us as to what could be causing Billy's condition. Schizophrenia and CJD are the most likely culprits in his case, respectively, because they often induce negative hallucinations, some of which could manifest as unnatural entities. There's also the possibility that Billy could be under the influence of a psychoactive substance throughout the course of the game, particularly a delirium hallucinogen, which are known to induce negative hallucinations and which sometimes may be displayed as the veneer teeth looking muscular. Hole. But this also doesn't address the fact that Billy only has one alteration in reality at one certain point in time, and in addition to the two aforementioned conclusions, there's also the possibility that the entirety of the events of Feed Me Billy were all just a dream, that the players just got the experience of witnessing, and that anything he saw that was unreal was simply in Billy's head. Rest assured that there's really no obligational burden on society to get a homicidal clown auto mechanic looking guy treatment, because his condition is entirely a work of fiction. So just know that these are a few of the possible reasons in addressing as to what's wrong with Billy.